السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd Respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters, youth, children Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu The life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was an example for every human being not just in regards to learning about the verses of the Qur'an or narrating particular ahadith from the Prophet ﷺ, but it was also to learn from the Prophet ﷺ in how to be a community leader, in how to be one who had the best interest of the community in him. The Prophet Sallallahu era was an era that also included difficulties and challenges and tribulations. And every difficulty that we may experience today and challenge that we may go through, we will find lessons in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu taught us how to interact with each other. His interaction with the brothers, his interaction with the sisters, his interaction with the children and the youth, his interaction with the rich, with the poor. The Prophet Sallallahu life was a way to understand how we as Muslims in the 21st century can also learn to interact with fellow community members, with our own children, with our elders, with our brothers and sisters. Before we continue, really quickly, I want to know how many brothers or sisters in this room today are affiliated or are part of a board at a masjid? Please raise your hand. Any brothers or sisters in this room that have or are affiliated as a board member of a masjid or a school or any other Islamic organization where we bring community together? The Prophet وسلم, had a Sahabi a companion of the Prophet وسلم, whose name was Abdullah. And this is a story that we may have heard before. But I'm going to share it again for us to make a point and to understand a very important point. This Sahabi came to the Prophet وسلم, while the Prophet وسلم, was engaged in what he thought something more important. That the Prophet وسلم, was with the elite of Mecca. He was with Abu Jahl. He was with Umayyah. He was with all of the elite. He was with the politicians of Mecca. He was with the aldermen. He was with the mayor. And he's having this da'wah session with him. And he thought that at the moment, the most important thing for me is for me to get the message of Islam across to these people. This is my golden opportunity. I may not have this chance again. And the Prophet ﷺ is engaged in giving this da'wah. And a sahabi by the name of Abdullah radiallahu anhu comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam not necessarily realizing what the Prophet was doing or how serious the matter was for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And all he had was a simple question for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
And he comes and he asks the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet وسلم, sort of turns away and he continues to do what he's doing. The Prophet وسلم, is thinking in his mind that couldn't this Sahabi find another time to come and ask me this question? I'm sitting, you know, sometimes if, if we're having in our own masjids as community leaders, imagine having a dinner for the, the politicians of your community. And while you're having this dinner, you have a regular, you know, musalli poor guy comes in with his chapels and says, hey, where's the wudu area in the middle of the dinner? Or where's this? Or where's that? The Prophet ﷺ is engaging, and the Prophet ﷺ, he frowns. But the interesting part about this is that the Sahabi that came to the Prophet ﷺ was blind. His name was Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum radiallahu anhu, and he couldn't see. And so when the Prophet ﷺ frowned, it wasn't something that he noticed. It wasn't something that he saw. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses of the Qur'an from Surah Abasa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the importance of giving attention to those with special needs. Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum radiallahu anhu was a companion who accepted Islam in the very early stages of Islam. He was a sahabi, that the Prophet ﷺ made as one of the teachers of Medina in the initial stages. The Prophet ﷺ chose this blind companion to become the mu'addin of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. There were two mu'addins. One was Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu, who was the Abyssinian slave at once upon a time. The Prophet empowered him by giving him that role of being a mu'addin. And the Prophet ﷺ empowered Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum by allowing him to give the adhan. And whenever the Prophet would go out on an expedition, the Prophet would leave Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum on many occasions in charge of the city. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was once asked by this Sahabi, that Unabi of Allah, look, I, I'm blind. I don't have much I can contribute to you know, the different expeditions that the Muslims go on. I can't see. However, I want you to allow me to stand in the third or the fourth row. And I want you to give me the flag of Islam. And I'm going to hold on to this flag. And it's mentioned in the Battle of Qadisiyah, the Sahaba, they found Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum on the ground with this flag firmly in his hand on the ground as a shaheed, as a martyr. That was a contribution that Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum radiallahu anhu gave. I remember just a couple of months ago, a young child, a young boy in our community who happens to be Sister Juhi's nephew, and who also happened to go on Umrah recently, came to the masjid. And he's a child who has special needs. And he asked me if I can give the adhan. And I said, of course. You want to give the adhan? Of course. I allow him to give the adhan. I recorded him giving the adhan. And I promise you, I haven't seen this child so happy ever before. The Prophet ﷺ empowered these people in his community who didn't feel empowered. The Prophet ﷺ was the person who took care of the downtrodden. The Prophet ﷺ was the one who took care of those who had no one to take care of. The Prophet ﷺ was there for people when there was no one there for them. In the beginning, I recited some verses of the Qur'an of Surah Wadduha. And the reason I recite this is because my father is deaf and hearing impaired. And he was born deaf. And so special needs runs in my family as well. Um, I have a brother-in-law who's also uh, someone who has a mental illness. And because of that, uh, a lot of challenges are, are you know, dealt with at home. My father, uh, when I graduated in South Africa, my father came to visit me, and many of my teachers ha had the opportunity to meet him for the first time. Um, they didn't know of his you know, condition. They didn't know he was deaf. And you know, the graduation happened. I continued furthering my studies and specializing in different sciences, and my father had gone back home. There was a gathering of Quran where I was asked to recite. And after I completed reciting, the, the MC was actually one of my teachers. So after 
he gave the, you know, after he, he thanked me for the recitation, he said something that shook me and made me cry at that moment. And he said that, that this, this young Hafiz and scholar who's reciting in front of us and all of us are, you know, benefiting and all of us are, you know, touched by the recitation, the man who put that effort to make him who he is today has never heard him recite before. The man who sits in front of him every Friday to listen to the khutbah that he's given has never understood a word that he has said. And this is something that my father has always asked me. My father is about 67 years old now. And my father, as I was a you know, young boy, would always bring up the discussion, why isn't there any resources at the masjid so that I can understand the khutbah? Why aren't there any resources at the masjid where I can actually understand the message of the imam? Now, as an imam, I'm able to tell my dad, you know, this is how it is. Or this is what I said. Or this is what is being said. This is what we're talking about. But many masajid don't have those resources, despite the fact that we have community members that need those services. And I remember that despite the fact that I have special needs and, and family members with special needs in, my, uh, in, in our community and in my own family, the thought of trying to do something, and may Allah forgive me, this may have been my weakness, the thought of trying to do something never came to my mind. The thought that let's push masajid to include people of special needs never came to my mind. Let's push the masajid to have people that can uh, provide, you know, services for children and for adults who need it. Until I was introduced to Muhsin. Until I was introduced to the great work that they were doing. That is when I realized that we have it within us to be able to do this. And I'm going to leave you with this inshallah for now. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grants us the ability, that He makes us those that are going to become leaders of our community that will provide. I came from a masjid, or I come from a masjid, that did not have any of these services just two years ago. And alhamdulillah, in two years, we were able to, as of today, become cert uh, the gold certification from Muhsin. Alhamdulillah. But that was a process. It didn't happen overnight. Not all the board members understood its, you know, its importance. Not all the community members understood what was going on. But we had families who would cry. I remember when we sat down in the very beginning and we had these discussions with families. There was one father in that gathering who said, and his daughter is autistic. Oh, sorry, his, his daughter had Down syndrome. And he says that the greatest fear I have or the thing that makes me the saddest is that when I come to the masjid and I find that my daughter has no friends in the masjid. That my daughter comes to the masjid and all the other kids are playing with each other. But they don't want to come and play with my daughter. They don't want to include my daughter in their activities because she's different. Or because they may not understand what she's saying. And that's what motivated us. And he started to cry. And you ask these stories, go around, find these people in your communities because they exist. They are there. And there is a process that Muhsin has provided for us to be able to, inshallah, bring our masjids to a level that we can start providing these services for our community members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the efforts of Muhsin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the efforts of all those who are involved. May Allah bless you all for attending tonight. Um, but I want to urge you all that let's take into consideration the importance uh, of this cause. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.